Hello, hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever you're watching from, welcome to RMC, where it is sizzling, hot, interactive, and transforming. In our series, we have been looking at the, the male figures. And on this episode, we shall be looking at the male figure as a colleague. And in the studio with me, I have Dr. Samuel. Dr. Samuel, good evening. Good evening, Frick Diaz. And also, we have Pastor Adegoke. Good evening, sir. You need to unmute your mic, sir. Pastor Adegoke, if you can hear me, you need to unmute your mic so that we can hear you because we can't hear you now. Okay. You have on mute now. We can hear you if you speak now. Good evening, sir. Hello, Pastor Digoke. Good evening, sir. Can you hear me? You can speak now. You speak now. We can hear you. Your mic has gone mute again. Hello, sir. And we also have Mr. Luwalewe. Good evening, sir. Good evening, man. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How has your weekend been, sir? I was fine, too. Yes. Uh, Pastor Degoke, I think one. your mic is muted, so we have not been able to hear you. So let's go on to today's episode, colleague. We are looking at the male figure as colleague. So we want to address some salient issues in regards to <coughs> relationship with colleague as male issues. Oh, Pastor Degoke said he cannot hear. I'll mute. Please let me turn. I'll mute, sir. I'll mute your mic. I'll mute your mic. I'll mute your mic, sir, so that you can hear us. He just sent me a message that he can hear us. But we, I think his mic is unmuted. He's muted, that's why. Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear you now if you talk because your mic has been unmuted. So if you speak now, we should hear you. So let's go on. So we're going to look at salient issues that happen in the relationship of people in a place of work. We are going to look at the issue of unhealthy rivalry and competition among colleagues. So I'm going to start from you, sir, Mr. Oluwalere. How do we undo the issue of unhealthy rivalry and competitions, competition among colleagues at work? Thank you. Uh, if the objective of uh, everyone in an organization or wherever we find ourselves is the same, then we don't need to have anything called rivalry or competition because pushing one word we are supposed to be aiming at the same objective so the issue of rivalry has always been a self-generated thing by maybe some people who might think they don't want anybody to be shoulder higher than them 
or they don't want anybody to go above them. But the issue is, if you are trying to pull anybody down, definitely you are pulling yourself down. So left to me, I don't expect us to have anything for rivalry or competition. If our objective is the same, you are in an organization, the objective is to maximize profit, is to have a niche ourselves as an organization. Then when you begin to bring in competition or rivalry, then you are trying to uh, bring down the organization. You are trying to cause disharmony in an organization. So what would I have expected anything that has to do with rivalry to be out of place? But human beings being what we are, most of the time we don't like people competing with us. But to me, if you really want to go higher, I don't see any reason why you should be in rivalry with any other person. If your mind is free, if you have a clean heart, the issue of rivalry shouldn't have arisen at all. But being human beings, being what we are, there's always the contending forces. I don't want this one to be greater than me. I don't want this one to be famous than me. I don't want this one to be on top. I don't want this one to be known than myself. And as all of that, the issue of rivalry or competition are bound to happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Dr. Samuel, I want to ask, the issue of a non talent attitude towards clients' well-being at work, I don't care if you're fine or not, just get the work done. How do we address that? Thank you very much. much. Um, we are not created or we are not created to exist in isolation. Most of the time, we need people around us to form our environment. That's why we are individual. We are not uh, in isolation in, inside one bush or forest, living alone. And as such, we will always find ourselves to be among colleagues, to be among friends. Knowing full well that we need other people, hope I'm audible enough, we need other people yes, we can hear you clearly. To, uh, to make our life worth living. Imagine only you being in the old world, how boring it would be. So looking at this, you don't have to say, am I my brother's keeper? You may not infringe into someone's privacy too deeply, but you should also know that checking on someone's uh, welfare how are you? Even exchanging pleasantry in the morning goes a long way, making so many people stay. So the I don't care attitude at work shouldn't be. The little courtesy and the little uh, concern or show of love you can exhibit at work will go a long way to reduce stress, creating a stress free or a stressless environment, working environment. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Degoke, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you speak if to know if we can hear you? Your mic is unmuted, so I don't know why we can. You can check your mic, please. So let's go on from there. I'm going to be directing this question to Dr. Samuel again. The question is that, you know, at work you have some people who are friends, some people who are just colleagues. So the issue of colleague and not friend, what are the merits and the demerits? Dr. Samuel, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. At work, we have people that are friends, and people that are colleagues. Some may be both friends and colleagues, while some will just be only colleagues at work. In that case, it has merit and demerit. There are merit and demerit in people that are friends 
and that are colleagues. If you are, if you are just. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We can hear you, sir. If you are just friends, or you are just colleagues, you make sure you go and look after each other, after one another, after one another. I'm sure the work is being done. Sure Some believe that Some where you work, where you work, make your money, make your living, come back home. Don't make unnecessary friends. Unnecessary. And why some believe and that where you work, you spend so long time there. Some feel like one third of their life at work. I eight hours every day. Eight hours and every day. I also make friends. I also make friends. The merit is that the when you make friends at work, at work, it makes a working environment to be a loving environment. And when you say a loving environment, the stress you are exposed to may be a little may be reduced because you have people to cope with your stress to help you absorb the stress and the worry. But it's also it's not also without demerit. And the demerit like will your relationship emotional will it affect your work? Yes it can. Your relationship if it's too emotional it can actually affect your work and affect your productivity. So you know the 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 owners not like on it, like like on it, it. It. So make sure that you control the level of relationship you go with at work, knowing full well that you are here to make a living, not to make friends. But while making a living, you also make friends. But the depth of the friend must be curtailed. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Pastor Degoke, can you speak so we are we can be sure you can we can hear you. Can you say something? Pastor Degoke. He said he can hear us, but he's not talking, or probably we can hear him. So uh Mr. Luwalere, please sir. Um the issue of friends and colleague. Friend versus Colleague, okay, we are friends at work. What should be the priority? Is it your friendship or work? <laughs> Thank you. If you are in office, uh, automatically you have said it. Your your purpose of being in the office is your purpose of being in the office is to earn a living. And if your purpose of being in the office is to work and earn a living then that should be a top priority at the expense of friendship. We know when you are when you are when you are in friendship definitely it could affect your work positively. But be that as it may, one will still expect your work to be of top priority. Because if you are in an office and the office is not doing well, directly or indirectly it will affect you. So because of that, work should be of top priority. Then friendship will come in. Although we know if you are in friendship, that could also affect your work positively. But notwithstanding that, the work should be of utmost priority. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. With you. So let's look at handling friendship and productivity at work. How do we maximize productivity without destroying relationship at work? Dr. Samuel? Thank you very much. There are ways we can maximize productivity without destroying relationship. The relationship we have in, at work has to be. I don't hear you. I think it's, it's ne network.
Hello, Dr. Samuel. Okay, Mr. Luan, can you address that question for us? Why are we waiting for him? The question again. How do we handle friendship and productivity at work? How to maximize productivity without destroying relationship at work? Well, at office setting, the cardinal objective of the organization is to maximize profit. But we know if our relationship is cordial, definitely it will go a long way in enhancing productivity at work. So because of that, as human beings, we are expected to let Ed and everyone in the office to know the reason why this office is, there, is in existence is for this office to perform so-so role and in the process of performing such roles, our, our, our productivity is being maximized. But then we need to know that if there is no harmonious relationship in an organization, definitely it will affect productivity. Let me give an example. There is an issue to be addressed. One knows it very well. The other one maybe is, an, is average on it. But because of the fact that there is no cordial relationship, that could cause one out of those uh, friends, at least, to withdraw information. And in the process of withdrawing such information, definitely, negatively, it will affect the office. So each and every one of us that are in office should be told the bitter truth that one of the reasons why this organization is in existence is for us to have a niche for ourselves, is for us to maximize profit, and that if there is no cordial relationship, it will affect the office negatively. For example, somebody is coming to, to get an information, and the information, maybe he has somebody he knows very well, and on getting to the office, he doesn't need that person. And because you that he met, because you are not in a good time with the person he's asking for, and you then, instead of divulging the information, you keep it to yourself because of the fact that you are not in friendship with the other person. Definitely, you are killing the image of that organization. That's one. Two, you, 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 a, a time will come, maybe if it happens one or twice, that person might decide, it's okay, instead of coming to this, why, why do I have to? This is a place where I go to and I won't get what I need. As a result, he might decide, it's okay, I won't be into this place. I will look for it somewhere else. So you discover if there is cordial relationship in an organization, definitely productivity really will be maximized. Because everybody will hear his own opinion, where it needs to be modified, where it needs to be at least uh, uh, at least explained. People will contribute things that are supposed to be corrected, corrected. And since we say two heads are better than one, definitely everybody will contribute and in the process it will affect the productivity of the organizations positively. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that is, uh, Dr. Samuel, please, can you address the issue of high service at work? Network is so bad today. Dr. Samuel, can you hear me? It's muted, it's muted. Yeah, yeah hello, I think hello. you should. Yeah, hello. you must have heard me, yeah. Did you hear the I, question? Uh, as, yes, I heard the question. As long as, as human beings, okay. there will always be eye service. So the issue of eye service is not what we can uh, really fight against. In the relation, there will be some people that will be that their main aim 
or of working there is to create an impression of what is really not going on. To try to impress the leadership or the CEO. That is not what anybody could do anything about. But for the leadership, the leadership can now make sure that to be able to sort out people that are doing eye service, that are involved in it, and that are not, by looking for a good way to reward. In every system, there should be reward and punishment system. And by the time you discover that the system is can sort out people that are really working or people that are doing eye service, to be able to discourage a lot of people from seeing that as a way of getting commendation at work. That's what I'm saying about that. Thank you. So there should be good system to reward people properly to discourage high service. Thank you so much, sir. Mr. Valerie, sir, how about backbiting at work? <laughs> wow. Thank you. Backbiting, we all know what backbiting should cause in an office. One, it could even bring the office down completely. So in an organization, as well as the human capital development should discourage the issue of backbiting. Anyone that is caught backbiting should be given a strict warning. If that warning is not at heart, then such person should, should, should be given a query. Because we all know backbiting at the end of the day would affect the image of the company negatively. You know, people look at an office far from far away. They want to look at what the company is doing that is doing well, things the company is doing that is not doing well. So if you have a staff in an office that is always backbiting, carrying first rumor here and there, Definitely those who are most of your customers. And if it's not checkmated on time, it will go a long way in affecting the image and the corporate existence of such company. So the company should have a policy, a lay down policy, a lay down policy that will frown at the other of backbiting. Hmm. There should be a Anyone made down policy to bad frown at backbiting. Hmm. Sorry? I'm trying to get what you're saying. I'm trying to emphasize on that. You said the organization should have a lay down policy to punish backbiting in the organization. Well, the thing went off. The thing went off. So, like I said, I don't know whether you heard me. The company, it must be a policy of the company. Anyone caught backbiting should have a punishment meant against him. Since we all know the issue of backbiting will affect a company negatively. So there should be a policy, a lay down policy against backbiting. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Dr. Samuel. In some organization, the the boss we have some people who are informants that we giving that we feeding the talk, information about things that are happening within the organization when the boss is not around. So how, how do one handle such people, or what? How is is it is it right to do that? Well. There are always the information. What you do with the information is now what the problem is. I know of a particular uh, federal establishment. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. I, I know a particular But well, you're sounding far away. It's faint. It's faint, but can I hear can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, better now. I hear you. Fairly. I know of a particular federal yes. establishment that had problem. And what was the problem? The leadership 
wants to know what is going on everywhere. Uh, the Bible said, if you listen to what every man is saying, you will hear your servant curse you. That's what Solomon Even said. the number of times that the, so when, the, 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 uh, the staff go to toilet. <laughs> yes. So what they do is that the moment they notice that you like to hear information, they will, they will tell you. A time will now come, they will now synthesize information. Fallacies, things that doesn't exist to tell you. Hmm. The first way to, to call by biting is that if anybody come and tell you that this thing is happening, or so person said, they say, sit down, don't worry. Call the person. Come. What you just said, say it in his presence. If, if you do that once or twice, they will, call, they will stop telling you unnecessary information. But if they bring an information to you and you welcome it, and you pay them for that, or you reward them for that, they will now start synthesizing information. On a long run, it will ruin your relationship with a lot of people, and it will ruin that company. It has ruined a lot of people. It has ruined relationship. It has ruined life based on the fact that someone will just synthesize an information, give you the information, and we expect you to hate that person for that information without, you, without any verification. So, if you are not the type that encourage side talk by biting, you won't hear the information. When I was, when we were in medical school then, there was this particular pastor, and he has one slogan, which I will never forget. Never correct a man you've not prayed for. So, when they come to you and tell you things, tales about somebody, the first thing you do, pray and fast for that person. Before you correct. <laughs> so when you know that for every Bible thing, you are going to pray and fast, you will not want to hear anything about anybody. Because you have enough prayer points first. So it is the leadership <laughs> attitude that can come by biting. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you so much, Sam. Um a lot so you notice in uh, most in some in fact, a lot in most organizations. Some people are threatened by the capacity or the potential of the other person. In fact, it is rampant in most cases where they, let's say there's a, the upline manager and the people that are in his team. Maybe there's somebody that he realizes that has so much capacity and that person is loved by the, their boss because of what the other person is putting on the table. But because this person to be his own superior, these people can feel threatened, and as a, as a result of that, they start victimizing this other person because they feel threatened by the potential of that person. Ms. Oluwalerisa, can you address that? Hello? You didn't get the question. Hello? Did you, Hello? Did you get the question, sir? Did you get the question? Did a train is cracking and I'm not really picking. I'm sorry, I'm not picking the message. Okay, can you where... hear me clearly now? Can you hear me clearly okay, now? Okay, I'm trying to hear. It's still you cracking. have been threatened by a colleague in an organization, especially when the person is your uh, subordinate. And you, the, the person that is being threatening is trying to pass negative information to the top against this person because he's trying to destroy the, the, the image, the integrity of the other person. Meanwhile, it is as a result of being threatened by the capacity, by the, the potential of that person. Did you hear that? I no. didn't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry. Samuel, did you hear that? Can you answer the question? Okay, let's it's hang on. Cracking, let's up. hope it gets better. Dr. Samuel, please, can you address that? <laughs> yes, hello. It's cracking. Yeah, you can go on. Hello. Yeah. The only way to handle someone trying to uh, uh, de uh, defend your character, someone try to run you down because the person is ahead of you, is just to continue doing what is good. Just continue the good thing you are doing. Initially, people may not realize that what you are doing is good. With time, they will know. Let's not be uh, weary in doing well, in well doing. 
because after a while, if you show the only thing that is constant is the truth. So when you are doing because someone is jealous or is feeling threatened and is trying to run you down, run your uh, to paint you black, just continue doing what you are doing. A time will come, they will come to you and say, actually, I've heard a lot of things about you. By now, no better that you are not what they said you are. And that's what it, that's how it will end. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So, Alaric, can you hear me now? Yeah. Is it better now? But, uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Dr. Fanny's voice is clearer than your own. Your own, most of them is cracking. I don't know whether it's network from your Oh, end. I think it probably is my network. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. But if I may... If if I may pick, if I may pick from what uh, Dr. Fenning has said, uh, you discover truth is always very constant. There is no two way to constant. truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me give you a small story of a man who has a very big company, and this man was getting notes, and he looked at it that it is time for me to bring up his successor. And he discovered that he finds it very difficult to pick from those who are from those those who are working with him. They are the same level that he finds it very difficult to pick the best of them. And he now said, okay, what I will do is out of these people, I will pick the most sincere person. So he gave them a test. You know, he gave them a seed. All of them. But unfortunately, when he was to give the seed, he boiled the seed. He boiled it. And thereafter, he gave it to them to go and plant it. And that once <laughs> this seed germinates and grow, they should come back. Hmm. And you know, all of them went... And you know, there is no way a seed that boy can grow. And they planted, <laughs> each of them discovered the tree was not growing, it was not germinating. And they went and changed it. Hey! They went and changed the seeds. And of all of them, there was only one that was sincere. The one they gave him was what he planted when the man was they all came back some of their seeds they are well grown up some are just to a certain level but it was only this man that his own seed didn't germinate and he brought it there that way it was given to him and when it was the day of recording the, 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 the man now came out and said okay how come your own is grown up how come this is not going up how come this one is not even was the same way it was. And everybody started laughing at that one who was sincere. And the man now told them the exact thing of what happened. That he has used this one to test them and know about them who is sincere. And you know, it was that person whose seed did not germinate that he picked. He revealed to them that of all of them that he, he boiled that seed before he gave it to them. And I see no reason why the seed would germinate. So what is this one telling us? Oh, <laughs> we lost this line, oh, wow. Anyway, that's a very good illustration. Wow, bold, <laughs> bold seed, that's interesting. Wow, Dr. Samuel, how do we build relationship with colleagues? Our friends? at work, how to build good relationship with our colleague or so-called friend at work. Thank you very much. Building relationship with colleagues or so-called friends is as if you have a goal, the company has a goal, or the establishment has a goal. And what is the goal? It's for them to make profit. So everything should be plainly, mainly, to fulfill the goal, to work as a single successful unit in that uh, establishment. 
there are so many relationships people could be involved in. But uh, so in a place of work with colleagues, build a single successful unit. Let your relationship, everything be based on how, how the company can achieve success. That is the best thing you can do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Now, with the understanding that uh, we should separate our personal relationship, friendship at work so that we can get, we can be productive. With that in mind, how can one be a shoulder to lean on to your colleague or to be a supportive colleague? Dr. Samuel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So being a shoulder to lean on. Yeah. You might also think that you should get one another's body. There is no way in an establishment there will be some people that are uh, that are uh, body bearers. They will always look after some other people, try to bear their body, check on other. There are people like that. And there are people that they just live a solo life. So in relationship, as far as we know that working at working is a uh, making a living is our main aim. We should not also look away from the fact that once in a while it's also good to check on one another to see how far we are go, go, going, to see if we are really coping with life. Because life sometimes could be stressful on people. And we don't know who is passing through the worst difficult period in life. So checking on one another, how are you? Hope we are good, would mean a lot. When people notice that, when people notice that you care about them, they will open up and talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Mr. Lolleri, welcome back. Hello, can you hear me? You pardon me this evening. The, the, the network has it's been okay. very, very bad. We so understand. Just me out on me. That's yeah. one of the challenges we have to face. We have to face bad network. And we pray through our nose. It's so sad. We are paying heavily for bad services. So the next question to you, sir, Mr. Oluwalere. Now, when you yes. have relationships that have been mild in organization among colleagues, how do we mend bad relationships at work? How do we mend it? How do we work it out? Because as long as you are both working together, you can avoid yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if I will get you clearly how to mend a broken relationship in an organization. Yes. If there is no, if the relationship in an organization is sour among staff, like I said, Take it or leave it, it will affect productivity. So what you do is, for those who have issues, call the two of them, sit them down, let them know the evil event of broken relationship. Let them know how it affects the organization negatively. Let them them know how it, it could even affect them. That. So talk to them, let them know the evil effects. Encourage them why they need to be open to themselves. Encourage them why they need to have a friendly relationship in an organization. It even cut across, it even go beyond the, the office. If that is a good cordial relationship in an office, definitely it will go a long way. It's even, it's even affecting you positively out of the office. So let them know 
once there must be a cordial relationship for an organization to survive, let them know this. Talk to them. Let them come out with whatever money they have and then find a way of resolving it. Because in a friendly environment, this tend to try relationships. There are many things you want to keep to yourself because of the second person who you're supposed to give the information to. You are not in a, in a good time. So let them know this. And I'm sure when you talk to them, you encourage them. I, I, I think it will cement the relationship and it will be to their, to their own advantage as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Uncle Samuel. How should one improve the quality of relationship in with our colleagues? Yeah. Dr. Samuel, how should one improve the quality of relationship with colleagues? In improving the quality of relationship in one colleague, so if you can so <coughs> to somebody, just show to the person that you are concerned about their well-being. Everybody wants to be appreciated. Everybody wants to want someone that shows concern. Everybody wants someone that gives, that shows attention. And that's what you need at work. Good morning. How are you? How was your weekend? Or oh, has your child gone to school? Are you okay? All those simple, simple, simple things and tricks. And make people know that you care about them. And it can go a long way in building... Thank you so much, Dr. Samuel. Mr. Oluwalere, how do we maintain lasting relationship with our colleagues? You see some organization, once they, maybe somebody is transferred to another uh, location or somebody got job in another organization, that's the end of the relationship. And in some other cases, you see people that have worked together for the past 10 years, they were ex-colleagues and they are still friends. How do we maintain lasting relationship with our colleagues? Well, there are many ways of maintaining lasting relationship with ourselves, with our colleagues. Thank God we are in the social media world. And it makes things very easy. It makes things very easy. Uh, as, outside the office work, there should be a time, maybe a social gathering or a religious gathering, you bring people together, you organize something, it could be a, a, a way of fostering friend relationship among families. You can bring them together, have a kind of seminar, and you discover this one will make it, will cement their relationship. And like I said, social media has made things easy. Now you can be here, the other person may be in abroad, and you still maintain, you still, you, you still have contacts. Unlike before that, once you are out of a place, once you are not uh, physically together, the relationship is broken. And even in spite of that, people still write letters then. How much more this era, era of uh, media, this social media world. So in maintaining the relationship, you could even create a kind of this WhatsApp platform whereby you talk to yourselves, you gain some insightful words, you pray, you do this, you ask for the family, and in the process of that, maybe if they have issues, you divulge it to yourselves, giving advice as to what to think they can do to prevent such problems. You see, if all those walls are in place, it will cover people who don't want to break the kind of relationship they have. That you know, maybe you have an issue, you have the free mind of divulging it to somebody but he gives you an advice and that advice you see that it helps you positively. Subsequently, you may not want to build relationship with them. No matter where they are posted to, you still have contact with yourself. It could be 
be through WhatsApp, it could be through calls, it could be through Zoom. You talk, talk to yourself. So I think those are the ways of maintaining relationship. The fact that you have been moved from one place to the other does not mean that should be the end of, uh, of the relationship. That for over 20 years ago, nine years ago, but depending on what was it did on the on the platform. And in time, in fact, in December seven up a year, of us came together and we share uh, memories. And at the time, uh, we lost. So shocked when when they tell me this social platform. Or what have you? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we are not going to be Hello? able to really, really go to the depth of this topic. So we are going to yeah. have a part two next week. So next week we are going to have the second part of this episode. The colleague working as a colleague. We're going to look at the issue of emotional relationship at work. We're going to look at the issue of organization, where they discourage uh, couples working together. Then the issue of couples working together, how would they manage it? We'll also look at sec the issue of sexual harassment in the place of work. Next week. Then we'll also look at victimization at work. Some people are complaining about being victimized at their place of work. Then the issue of favorism. When you favor somebody above the, the other in the place of work. So those are the things we're going to look at in the next, in the part two of this next week. So I want you to please give us your final word for today, your advice for people in the place of work, how to relate with our colleague and at the same time be productive and at the same time um, maintain good relationship with our colleagues. Dr. Samuel. Thank you very much. The only thing that is constant is the truth. You look at it from every angle to continue to be the truth. So when you find yourself in uh in where people are trying to run you down, look down on you, just continue doing the good work. Like Joseph did. Come out somewhere the truth will come out. You will be. Thank you so much, everybody, for staying tuned to this episode on Real Men's Talk. Um, before we conclude, Mr. Aluale, what's your word for people regards being productive and maintaining good relationship with our colleagues? Mr. Aluale. Mr. Luale, can you hear me? Hello? Are you hearing me? I'm talking already. Hello? Uh, okay, now I can hear you. Are you hearing me? We can hear you now. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You discover that there is nothing as having one mind, particularly when we are working in the same organization. Uh, when you don't love yourself, like I said, it will affect you, it will affect your work, it will affect the organization, it will even affect your life. So you discover mm -hmm. there is nothing as good as being cordial in whatever you do. If you have an open mind, and the person you are working with too has an open mind, and you have the same corporate goal of Oh, <laughs> wow. I think the network pushed him out. Well, it's been so good. We have been able to do the first part of this episode. Okay, it's back. Uh, uh, 
was trying to admit him. So, next week we shall continue from there where we address the other issue of victimization, sexual harassment at work, favorism, and the rest of them. So, see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Hello. Let's all stay focused. Yeah, good night. Have a beautiful weekend. So to our viewer, stay glued to RMT where it is signaling hot, interactive, and transforming. Enjoy your weekend and have a beautiful Sunday and a wonderful week ahead. Bye. See you in the next episode.